They made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child didn't know who you was. Didn't know you'd come to save us, Lord, to take our sins Well, friends, in the bulletin, there's a call to worship from the scriptures from Matthew 1 of Jesus' birth, and they also will be on the screen. And I'd just like you to begin our worship then, joining with me. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. To fulfill the words of the prophet, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Oh, God. 
Jesus, to Thee be all glory given. Lord of the Father, now in flesh appearing, oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Our candles have been lit this Advent season to welcome the work that God is doing among us. This Christmas Eve, we welcome the Holy Child of Bethlehem to dwell in our hearts. May we believe that he is God's Son, sent for our salvation, and always let him rule on the throne of our lives. Hear these words from Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. We light these candles as a prayer of welcome to the Christ child. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we rejoice with all heaven and all the faithful on earth at the news of Jesus' birth. Fulfill in our world and in your church your promise of peace on earth and goodwill toward men. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
the scripture from Luke's Gospel, second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Wise men, leave your contemplation, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, wor <coughs> the newborn. Saints before thee, how oh, we view him, he will share his father's throne. Gather all the nations to him, every knee now then bow down. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the new. And the angel that was speaking to them continued and said, And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. 
And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them, where the Christ was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Thank you. 
John's Gospel in the first chapter opens with these words. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth.
I'd like, to, I'd like to read the last verse of the passage that I just shared. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now that is how John opens his gospel. He doesn't take us to Bethlehem. He doesn't tell us about shepherds or a star doesn't tell us about swaddling clothes and the journey. does not name at this point Mary and Joseph. But he tells a Christmas story nonetheless. You know, those shepherds were in the fields, and the heavens opened after the Christ child was born, and the glory of God shone down around them. What was wonderful in heaven, the presence of God, the love of God, the grace of God pouring down from heaven was suddenly all around them. And so, as John said, the true light that was coming into the world came to us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory. John knows about Bethlehem and the birth from the virgin. He knows about the announcements of the angels but he puts to you that you need to hear that there is grace and truth in the coming of Christ to be with us all. And that is a word that I needed to hear so many different times in my life. You see, the Christmas proclamation, the Christmas story is so important. I, I've, I've never missed a Christmas Eve in all, in all my days. Because I needed to hear. And I want to speak specifically, and this is one of those where we couldn't possibly ask a, ra a show of hands. I, have some, I want to speak specifically to you because if, if it could be that tonight you're here, but, well, maybe you're not all here. I have sat in Christmas Eve services different times in my life and everything inside of me was all wrong. I either had a broken heart or a broken conscience. I was struggling with things that God can help us and free us from. I was needing grace and truth. I was needing to know forgiveness. I was needing to know the truth that God has for me and the truth about me in my relationship to God. You can be in church and feel all, all alone. You can be in church and hold a candle, as I did, very conscious, conscious of the fact that I have a light out front, but I'm casting quite the shadow behind me. I'm no good to the people around me, and just wrong. Again, a broken heart or a recent loss where the world's just come down around you or what's going on inside is wrong. Consider in those times that I met at Christmas Eve, indeed, grace and truth. And one of the easiest places I encountered it was in the other people worshiping. You know, you're in a crowd of people and we're all holding lights. And as I said, there's quite the shadow from behind me. But around me, 
on either side and in front are people that are indeed holding lights, that indeed have heard the word of grace and truth, that the work, work and the spirit of God is going on in their life and from their lives pours forth, indeed, illumination, help, and grace. It's what God does among us and through us. And so if you're sitting there and that's your state, there is hope because the true light, as John said, that gives light to every man was advancing into the world. There's a great contrast between the things I might do or say, I might hold my light again, casting that shadow behind, and the light that is generous, that advances into the world, that has make it, made it his business to become flesh and dwell among us and make no mistake that those who encountered Jesus Christ knew God's grace, his forgiveness, his truth, his power. He is not just carrying a light, he is the light. When he is made flesh, it seems that we're talking about a birth. You have to be, have a birth to be made flesh. But John quickly talks about our birth, our rebirth. For he says, to all who, who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. To be children of God and heirs of all God's promises in a way we did not know before we knew Christ. That you're born not of blood or any natural thing, but born of the will of God. His, he quickly moves from talking about the birth of Christ to the rebirth that is possible in the heart. Even when all in there in darkness, even when there is nothing but despair and confusion. And also... John continues to talk about the death of Christ in which our death is bound up. And we can easily say, by faith, I died to sin and I live with Christ. And in there is also our resurrection. As Christ is raised from the dead, we also shall be raised from the dead. So even if the shadow over your life today is that of death, that of terrible limitation, that of loss, Christ brings grace and truth into that situation. And John, of course, would surprise because he says the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness is not overcome it. And he would say, and this Jesus has, has gone to be at the right hand of the Father and he pours forth from there his Holy Spirit. And, and if you had John here and said, well, where is this Christ? Where is this word made flesh? He would say, he's here in spirit. And we have to begin to grasp that there's a different meaning to that phrase than we would think. I'm connected to a great many people. And in the first service, my phone began to text all over the place. There were, there were calls about a prayer request. There was a call about something somebody cute was doing that was cute. It was a small child. And old friends sending greetings. I had to put my phone over get, so I could pay attention to the service. And you know, if I took my phone and said, I really miss you guys. I, I'm with you in spirit. You know what that means. It means I'm not there. <laughs> Jesus is present in the spirit because it is in the spirit. Where, you know, the psalmist says, whither can I go from thy spirit? It means I cannot get away from the spirit of God. His, it is his His coming to us to be present with each and every one and is best explained in the light of a single candle. You can light one candle and a whole room shares the fullness of that light. One light and all can see. Jesus comes to give life. He, become, he comes to give light to your darkness and spirit to what is broken inside. He can dwell in you and he will dwell in you because John opens this gospel with a promise to all who receive Christ, who believe in his name. He gives the right to become the children of God. He will add, dwell in you and add to your light so that in the measure of grace that he gives you, you also will illuminate from the inside. There's no shadow of turning with God. Jesus is present. He is the light of of the world. Hallelujah and amen. And I can call the team up to lead us in silent night.
shepherds quake at the sight. Glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing hallelujah. Christ the Savior is Let us pray. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Be born this night in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. May the light of your life be kindled in us. Lead us to that great truth of God with us and God for us and God in us. Amen. And Merry Christmas. <laughs>